Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 28. Our first question is a basic arithmetic question that looks at figuring out the cost. A company sold a total of $2,350 in flowers during Valentine's Day. If a bunch of flowers cost $25 a piece, how many flower bouquets did they sell? Okay, so sometimes in the GED, uh, GED they have uh, problems that ask you for the total cost. That's a popular question. Another one um, involves like distances. So those are two really good formulas uh, to memorize. So this is the formula for cost. So total cost is equal to the number of units times price per unit. Definitely recommend that you memorize this formula because again, it would make your life uh, much, much easier. Okay, so in the question, they give us, uh, they're asking us how many number of units or flower bouquets did they sell? So we would take this formula and rearrange it, right? Um, so that it looks like this. Total cost divided by price per unit is gonna give us the number of units. So if you plug these numbers in, we have uh, 2,350, which was the total uh, cost or the total amount sold in flowers, divided by $25, which was the price per unit, and that gives us th uh, 94, okay? So they sold 94 flower bouquets, and that is answer C. Question two, applied arithmetic, this is a ratios problem. Three candidates are running for governor. The results of a survey of 450 registered voters are shown below. What is the ratio of Jackson supporters to Love supporters? All right, so if you look at the table, okay, and they're asking us the ratio of Jackson to Love, Jackson has 120 supporters, so 120, and then Love has 60 supporters. So that's the ratio, 120 to 60. Remember, in the GED, they will always ask you to reduce fractions and ratios to the simplest form. So how do you do this? Well, you find a common denominator between those two numbers, and then um, you simplify it as much as you can. So in this case, the common denominator or the number that both of these numbers divide by is 60. So you would divide both sides by 60, and that gives you a 2 to 1 ratio. Answer A. Question three is an algebra problem. It says Jack and Lydia worked a total of 74 hours a week. If we let X equal Jake's hours for a week, which of the following equations could be used to find out Lydia's work hours? Okay, so here, um, what I like to do always when you um, look at any question is try to eliminate any possible answers from the answer options. So in the question they're at telling you that the total, a total of 74 hours, right? But if you look at option B, it's telling you it's a total of 38, okay? So that can be eliminated. Same thing goes for question C. It's not equal to 38, it has to be equal to 74. All right, so now you only have to deal with the, these two answers. And then the question is, tell, is telling you that um, Jake and Lydia, okay, so Jake plus Lydia's hours equals 74. So essentially you have to just simply choose the first equation where you have, uh, where you're adding, okay, so x plus 38 is equal to 74. That would be the correct equation. Question four is also an algebra question uh, where they're asking you to solve an inequality. And here, uh, what you have to do is you have to take each of the answer options and plug it into the inequality until you get the correct answer. Okay, so if we start with A, um, which is minus two, you would take that minus two and plug it in uh, where the X is. Okay, so you have uh, this formula that gives you minus 10 plus 4 on the right side, which is equal to minus 6. So 13 is not less than minus 6, so that tells you that option A is incorrect. 
If we do the same thing for option B, plug in minus 3 where the x should be. That gives you minus 15 plus 4, which is equal to minus 11. Again, 13 is not equal, uh, less than minus 11, so option B is incorrect. Option C, if we plug in that 0 where the x goes, we end up with 0 plus 4. 13 is not less than 4. That option is also incorrect. And finally, when you plug in D, which is, is a 2, um, this is what you would get. You would get 10 plus 4, which is 14. And now this option is correct. 13 is less than 14. Okay, so your correct answer would be D. And this you can tell, you can see that it takes a little bit of time uh, to figure out, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. Our final question is a geometry question. And again, I say this in absolutely every video. Just remember, they will give you the formulas for the geometry uh, questions. However, um, make sure that you've had a look at them, you've used them a few times, because these are questions that can be you know, easy points and you don't want to miss them. So the question is saying that uh, Joe is building a rectangular shaped pool with the dimensions shown below. Uh, what is the perimeter of the pool? So if you look at the dimensions, they're giving you the length, which is 35 feet, and the width, which is 12 feet. And then they're asking you the perimeter. So the perimeter is the, dis the distance around the pool. Okay, so if you were to walk around the perimeter, it means that you were walking uh, along the whole of the, uh, the distance, the whole distance of the pool, so to speak. All right, so if you look at the formula for the perimeter of a rectangular, uh, rectangle, this is what it is, uh, two times the length plus two times the width. Okay, so we said that the length is 35 and the width is 12, so we just plug that equation like that. I think I got the uh, numbers in the wrong order, but um, it, it, I mean, th that's what the equation would look like. Um, that gives you 24 plus 70 for a perimeter of 94. Okay, so you can see that it is pretty straightforward. All right, so your correct answer would be C. All right, folks, well, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you for your support of this channel. Stay positive, stay strong, have a terrific day, 